All right. We're in Spokane, Washington. 2018 Raw Nationals. We got Leah. Uh, we're going to see Baraki, male and female. Uh, the funniest thing that just happened, I think it's going to be the intro to the vlog. <laughs> this, this woman is running towards me and she goes, Oh, there's daddy. There's daddy. There he is. <laughs> Turns out that the, an there's another <laughs> man on the other side with a kid. So daddy made more sense. But screw it. Let's roll with it. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Barbell Medicine YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Jordan Feigenbaum. This is a special training vlog. This is from the USAPL Raw Nationals that were held in Spokane, Washington. We've got uh, meat reviews from Leah Lutz, from Dr. Austin Baraki, and Dr. Lorraine Baraki. But before we get into that, I want to tell you about a brand new free uh, set of templates that we just released. These are peaking templates. Now, we're going to be talking about peaking uh, as it pertains to uh, performance on the powerlifting platform. So we figured, hey, why not? we uh, released some examples of this for you guys. So we did, we have three templates. One is uh, for novices, newer folks, and then two more advanced templates. One for somebody who peaks very quickly and one for somebody who peaks uh, fairly slowly. Each are three weeks long. So you'll have the opportunity to kind of play around with those and they're free. So I'll leave the link below and you can find it on our website. Uh, make sure you guys go check those out and give us your feedback on them. So let's talk quickly about what it takes to get to nationals. So one, you have to compete in a USAPL sanctioned meet in the previous year and put up a qualifying total. Now there are two sets of totals on the USAPL website. One is for equipped lifting and one is for raw powerlifting. So you have to put up a qualifying total in the raw powerlifting uh, class that you uh, participate in, whether that's a weight class uh, and or there may be an age group class like a master's, teen, junior, or something like that. So you have to put up a qualifying total uh, within the past uh, year, and then you get an invite to sign up for USAPL Raw Nationals. Now this meet was huge, over 1,100, I think it was 1,300 lifters uh, went uh, through the platforms over the course of the four days this took place. And the USAPL Raw nationals are also a uh, sort of uh, a qualifier for the IPF worlds, the raw world. So if you win your weight class here, you are likely to get a bid to go to IPF worlds. I think they're being held in Sweden um, this upcoming year. So again, you have to uh, show up you have to win <laughs> and uh, then you can get a bid to go to Worlds. So it's all sort of a feeder process to go to Worlds. They'll be held uh, next year in June, I believe in Sweden. So that's pretty cool. Now, as far as meat prep goes, you know, all three lifters that we're gonna uh, see today uh, prepped uh, for a very long time to get ready for this meet. And, you know, about four to uh, 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 six weeks before training started to change. Now they weren't, they didn't start to peak that early and that's why none of our peaking templates, again, which are free and available in the link below, um, none of them last for longer than three weeks. It's just that their training got much more specific uh, to the task at hand. So for powerlifting, you're thinking low velocity, max force production for three lifts, the squat, the bench press, and the deadlift. Um, including other things like the press, like high velocity, low uh, lightweight movements um, tend to be less productive use of training time um, during this period. So we get much more specific about four to six weeks out. You know, again, this depends on the person. And then about two to three weeks out, we start this sort of peak where we're trying to, again, continue everything being very, very specific to the task at hand, which is squatting a heavy single, benching a heavy single, and deadlifting a heavy single, um, while also trying to reduce this non-productive fatigue or fatigue that doesn't contribute to improving strength performance. And so ultimately the idea is to come into the meet and perform as best as possible on meet day. Now, not everyone responds to the uh, a given set of training the same way. And you know that uh, based on our other podcasts or other uh, videos or other uh, uh, articles, 
you know, you, if you give 100 people one program, you're gonna have people who respond very well to it, you're gonna have people who respond poorly to it, and you're gonna have a bunch of folks in the middle. Peaking kind of goes the same way. You'll have people given a standard sort of peaking protocol who don't do very well. They go to the meet and they perform worse. They would prefer to train a little bit harder going into the meet. You'll have people who uh, do this peaking protocol and uh, do very, very well. It works uh, well for them. And so you kind of have to feel out how much uh, uh, training fatigue do you need to pull off uh, at what time in order to get that, that peak. So which you'll see again in these peaking templates that we're giving you guys for free, um, three different iterations of that. And so hopefully you guys like this. Um, so without further ado, let's hop in to the Raw Nationals sort of uh, video review. We'll start out with Leah, we'll hear from her and then get into her videos. Hi, my name is Leah Letts. So we just got back from Spokane, Washington yes. with Raw Nationals. Uh, what do you think? So, Personally, mm -hmm. I think that it was the best meet for me that I've ever had, probably outside of my first. I mean, obviously my first meet was fantastic because everything was great, but this was the best meet I've had in a really long time. Uh, what was so good about it? So I feel like not only was my training going into the meet, it went really well, I felt well, um, and then mentally, I feel like this was a huge meet for me because I was in a really good headspace for the meet and I stayed in the game the whole time as a competitor, didn't lose it, was really focused on what I wanted to get done. Uh, so take us through your attempts. So squats, I opened with 145 kilos. How'd that go for you? It, now that I look at the video, it went really well. Mm -hmm. As always happens, I have my opener and I'm afraid that I like did something funky, but I didn't, it was totally fine. Um, it's always good to get the nerves out though. Then I went from, to, uh, from that to 150. Felt great about that. And then I squatted 155 for my third. And that was a great third for me. I don't think I had anything more left in me that day. So it was a good lift. Uh, Adriana, sorry. We have Leah Lutz up for her last attempt. Master one and an open d division competitor today at 155 kilos. It's 341 pounds. Fight through it, Leah. Oh, good fight for Leah from Barbell Medicine. Should be a good lift. Let's see. <laughs> She's always got such a great smile after her lift. Yeah. I love it. A good lift. Three white lights. Nice. And then take us through benches. So I opened with 80 and it flew. I uh, set up well. I've been known to go out for my benches and do something really unusual with my grip or my setup or something like that. And I did not do that. Listen to the commands, went great. So we jumped from 80 to 85. That felt really fantastic as well. Then we went to 87.5. I was sure I was gonna get it, but it got part way up and I could not move that bar anymore, so. And then we finished up with deadlifts. Tell me, take us through that. So I opened with 150 kilos, which is a great deadlift opener for me. And then I've jumped from that to 162.5. Again, felt really great. And then from there, I went to 165. Uh, All what three you, deadlifts flip. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, I think probably we would have taken, I mean, what do you think on your third attempt? What do you think you had in you? I definitely had more, so yeah. I would have liked to have pulled 167.5, it's possible. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure Something. that was there. Yeah. 170 would have been a more a riskier pull, yeah, but 67 and a five would have been a smoke show. Yeah. That just, yeah. you know, had we had another chance to do it, yeah. then hindsight's exactly. always 20, 20 so. Yeah. Uh, all right, so any, uh, any takeaways from this meet that you're gonna carry with you into 2019? <sighs> <laughs> so finishing a meet like this, I don't know if I have any take, well, my one takeaway would be that it is really true that my mental state really does have a huge effect on how I will do in a meet. Um, I mean, like I knew that intellectually, but I feel like I really experienced that this time and that was, that's a big deal. So it's something we've been working on for a long time. And I feel like I finally made some progress, so I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. And now we'll see what's next. It's kind of tough to come down after a big meet like that, so I just got to figure out what I'm going to do next. Yeah. So maybe NAPF, the those championships, maybe Worlds. We'll see what happens exactly. when the team nominations come out. 
it's up in the air right now. Sure. I mean, I'm still going to train. I'm still going to compete. I went and I loved it. I love competition. I love being around the people. So. And you ended up second overall PR total. Yes. Finally broke 400 kilos. Very cool. So now I just got to break 900 pounds. There you go. That's next. <laughs> yep. All right. This is Leah Lutz saying goodbye. So overall, I think that Leah did a great job. Uh, I think if I had to do it over again, I probably would have put her third deadlift in at 167 and a half and just left it versus bringing it down. I thought, you know, again, based on what the other competitor who was on another platform had put in for her third deadlift that we uh, had a really good chance to go win the meet. Um, ultimately, I would have liked to see them on the same platform in order uh, for them to go head to head. Uh, but, you know, that's why you got to show up to the meet and participate. And uh, we learned something. And uh, this uh, still was a really great performance for her PR total. Um, really great performance. And I think that she had a little more in her deadlift uh, that I would have liked to see her pull. Um, but we'll get them next time and we'll see what happens when it comes uh, around to uh, the world selection. So overall, you know, she squatted 155 kilos, uh, 341. She benched 85 kilos, uh, which is, uh, let's see, 186. Um, I think she had a little bit more in her um, on that. And then uh, she pulled 165, which is uh, three. Uh, 63. I think she had another five pounds, maybe 10 pounds tops uh, in her deadlift on that day. Expect this to get uh, better for her. Okay, so this is the uh, meet review for Lorraine Baraki. I'll actually comment on the video going through this. This is the post Raw Nationals uh, debrief. Yeah. Uh, so ladies first, Lorraine, how do you feel about your performance? I feel good. I feel grateful for the way everything came together yesterday, um, just in light of very unpredictable training leading up to it for the last several months. Um, so I'm just, I'm happy with having gotten out on the platform and had a positive experience overall. So she started out here with 132 and a half kilo squat. We'll kind of go through lift by lift. And we pulled these off the live stream, so hey, the 720p is gonna gonna be okay here on the tubes. So they walk out, they gotta give you a squat command. Then she takes her breath. That's how we recommend doing it. Depth was really great. Notice how fast that was. Um, you know, she's a pretty fast lifter, meaning that uh, her uh, even when it gets heavy, the things move quickly. So that you know, stuck with plan A. Austin was there by her side, calling her numbers. So she moved up to uh, 142 and a half. So a 10 kilo jump. Again, nice depth, good speed. Yeah, from this angle, I can't see anything that I would change at all, uh, except for add more weight. <laughs> and they went up to 152 and a half, so this is 336. Again, just notice every walkout looks the same. What you're not hearing is a head judge give her a squat command. A little bit slower descent on that one, and uh, yeah, that was a good choice on the third. I think 155 would have been, you know, it was probably there, but a little more risky maybe than they wanted to take given uh, given the uh, scope of the meat. So this was her first bench, 87 and a half kilos, uh, was it 190? And then uh, this is 92 and a half, so it's 205. It's a really good bencher for a 63 kilo lifter. These are these are big numbers. Yeah. Now, one thing you got to watch on the on the pause, especially in training, is to make sure the bar doesn't bounce up and down. Now, she got a good, nice press command there. That's all good. But I think, you know, some judges would uh, uh, make her hold that longer. Yeah. Same thing on the third one. The bar is still kind of moving around. I mean, this is 102 and a half or 97 and a half. So 215, 214 and a half. Um, so that was a heavy bench and she missed that one ultimately. I'm not, I don't know if it was due to the little bounce thing, but um, in training, it's one thing to look out for to make sure that you're gonna get a, a consistent press command. All right, so this is our first pulls, 152 and a half. So again, 336, smokes it, moves up to 165. So this is 363 or 364, something like that. Again, just notice how the, the setup is the same on all of these lifts so that you can tell someone's had a lot of experience doing singles and and uh, prepping for the meet. That's something we do um, as the meet gets closer and closer to make it more specific uh, to the task that we're going to be tested in. And this is our third pull, 172 and a half. Now she's pulled much more than this, over 400 pounds um, in a meet, but uh, training was a little compromised, which, uh, you know, she talks about in her 
in this post interview that we'll get to in a second. But this is, uh, yeah, three, uh, 380. Yeah. So that'd probably be a good second attempt. We just, you know, didn't know necessarily what to pull. And uh, that's a good lift. So she has a PR total, 417 and a half kilos. Lorraine did great. And let's hear from her. I think my favorite part was all the people I got to meet. A lot of people that we connect with on social media. Um, and these kind of events bring it all together and you get to put a face to like an Instagram handle. Um, but specifically just some of the women in my weight class and in my flight specifically. Um, so that was really wonderful to get to meet some folks and just to share in our training experiences and to share in the experiences that we had on the platform together yesterday. So that was uh, Lorraine. She did great. She placed 10th overall in a very competitive 63 kilo class. She was not on the primetime roster. I expect that she'll be there next year. Um, now let's see what her husband, Dr. Austin Baraki, did in the 93 kilo men's open class. So we started him, I was handling him. We opened at 265 kilos on the squat. So this is, uh, you know, 585 or something like that. And so you can watch his walkout just, and you also watch the bar. This is something we don't see in his normal walkouts from home. There's a lot of whip on the bar, meaning the bar is oscillating quite a bit. And actually he gets called on depth on this first, uh, this first lift. Now, you know, that's not a great angle to see it from. And ultimately the judges say what they say and got to respect that. But you can see the two side judges get him on depth. The front judge said, eh, it looked all right to me. You know, the, the problem was the side judges were sitting kind of in front of where he was. So they weren't really on the side and there's all these spotters around. So in any event, we retook uh, the same attempt to 265 again, 585. Um, and I just told him, I was like, hey man, get your knees a little further forward, bury this thing, let's move forward. So. We'll watch him take 585 to the basement. Yeah, a little, deep, little bit deeper, but again, still no, no struggle there. Strength is good. And uh, you got three whites on that one, as you can see. And then we end up taking 600 on the third. Now, if this were um, a meet where he was in contention for the win or for a medal or something, and we needed to be at a certain place at by the end of squats in order to be competitive then i might not have repeated his opener but you know um given the situation we were just uh, making sure that we were in the meet this is the first raw nationals and we kind of expected him to be uh you know in the around 10th to 15th overall if it had, had a pretty good day i think that repeating the opening attempt was a was a good choice so they actually make him re-rack this thing because his knees weren't locked out so that was the deal there so i'm just telling him, hey man you're good you're strong don't worry about it yeah he and he'll say you'll hear in his uh, upcoming interview after the squats that uh, he thought the bar whip contributed to that but you know it's got to be hard to see given the knee sleeve situation but again you got to respect what the judges say so he gets the squat command takes a breath after and 600 moves very well. I think 611 would have gone on the day, uh, but you know, ultimately happy to do a 600 pound squat in competition. Let's hear from Austin. I feel like I probably need to train more closer to the moves, particularly on the squat. You would rather take more I can singles. Fake, I can fake a bench any day, but you would rather have more uh, squat sessions leading up to a meet so you don't PK whatever I the thing is that my I think my I would keep my training volume up for longer probably until three days out or something like that. yeah I mean I just mean, five days out yeah and so the, the performance here was similar to how it was at my last meet yeah uh, where my squat was not where I wanted it to be and I used a slightly different but still fairly similar kind of peaking strategy and uh, yeah I think I perform very well in training when I'm under a lot of fatigue. Not that I need to come in with a bunch of fatigue, but I need to just keep more it higher for longer. But, or the alternative argument Go ahead. is that whatever training frequency benefits has on right. your squat, yeah, yeah, because yeah. I see the way I see my bottom position on those squats, even on 600. My bottom position is not as tight and not as bouncy as yeah. I normally am in training. Part of that was because I was having to, like, excessively, uh, not excessively, but go deeper than I wanted to. So the judges say. Um, and then the last thing I'll say is, 
Have you thought about hypertrophy in your TFL? The, type the, the, the unracking and working out these weights on the Titex bar has noticeably more whip compared to the Ohio Power Bar that I train on, particularly front to back whip. So when I'm walking it out, it's like oscillating back and forth on me, which is very, very distracting. And is the, I know it's the reason why my knees were wobbling when I unracked it. I could feel it. So I was like squeezing my quads. I was like, please give me the command and that made me re-rack it. So um, I had to excessively squeeze my quads the second time, but it's still, I feel the oscillation. So I'll probably just have to get one of these bars, I guess, to train on or something. Yeah, or like weight releasers or use chains that are not anchored to the ground. Sure, or train my squat on a deadlift bar. Yeah, yeah, something. <laughs> so, all right. Okay. Uh, 272 and a half out of way. Yeah, on the, uh, likely now you'll just PR your bench press PR by not training. <laughs> yeah, now I can, yeah, bench and deadlift. Bar. All right, so we're back here with Austin. We're moving on to the bench press. So we opened up at uh, 172 and a half kilos. This is uh, 379. And uh, Austin hasn't really been able to train his bench that much. Um, basically, he had some elbow issues that uh, finally started to resolve. So he was able to actually start benching a couple weeks uh, before the meet um, with relatively challenging weights. And um, yeah, so you, you, you can still see that he's very strong. So the absolute strength did not decay very much. It's just a skill practice, being able to expose yourself to the bench over and over again in order to get better. So opened up at 172 and a half, smokes that. We go to 180 kilos. So this is 396. Um, you know, it had been nice to get a 400 pound bench in competition. So we were planning on 396 was going to be a smoke show. And then we go up from there, see how this feels. So let's see this. So the bar comes out, they're gonna give him a start command. Yeah, and so I saw that 180 moved so quick. I said 185 was gonna be a fine call. I mean, if he would have said 187 and a half, I would have believed him. Um, you know, but you can see here, we're gonna take 187 and a half, or 185 rather, uh, which is 407. And, um, you know, I don't I don't actually know if it got misgrooved. I, I, I watched this video a few times. I don't think that the bar path was incorrect. I just think it might have been a strength thing or something else. So let's just watch this 185 kilo uh, lift. Now the best he'd done in training was 405, but that was a self lift off in his garage, you know, not after squatting as well, but yeah, I mean, just a little slower off the chest. I don't think that the bar was, uh, misgroo you know misgrooved at all i just you know not there on the day so we'll take 396 and a 600 pound squat and go into deadlift so he's going to open up up here at 287 and a half uh i think this is <clears throat> 635 or something like that just complete smoke show yeah i was like put some weight on the bar <laughs> i think i told him to open up at 290 and he wanted to back it down by two and a half kilos but that's fine so we moved to 302 and a half so this is 666 let's hear gino call this yeah, so after he smokes 666, we were like, okay, let's go with plan A. We'll go up to 310 kilos. So 310 is, you know, 684. It's a really good pull, the PR pull in, uh, I think, all time. Because I think 675 was his best pre prior to this. So excuse my iPhone cinematography. Yeah. And I, I think if he wanted to do another two and a half kilos, that would have been there on the day. But, you know, end of the day, three whites. Let's hear from the man himself. Uh, Austin, same question to you. How do you feel about your performance overall? Uh, so, if I compare totals, it was a total PR. It was just under a 40 kilo uh, PR total. So, obviously can't complain about that and meet PRs on all the lifts and a deadlift PR. Uh, the numbers were definitely on the squat and the bench were not quite what I was looking for. Um, and I think that was due to just some issues that came up during the day and probably you know, not having quite enough meat practice under my belt. So I need to compete a little more to get better at, at handling those situations. And uh, I mean, I think that this, the total today with the numbers I put up today and the training that I put in leading up to this, I think that an 800 kilo total is not outside the realm of possibility. Especially if I can train my bench and get my squats on point on meat day, it would probably take some different 
strategies leading into you know the last week or two of training on the squat probably train a little more a little closer to the meat i think we'll, we'll uh, end up in some better performance there bench 200 kilos and, you know it was funny because you were like, yeah, so I just need to like squat a little bit more and then actually train my bench and then keep pulling. And it's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, you mean like train? Actually, just, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, for a long time, it's been one thing or the other that's been an issue or residency or not, you know, uh, necessarily having the, the time or the opportunity to compete as often as I wanted to. So now a lot of those things are kind of out of the way at the moment. So I think we hopefully have a good stretch of training uh, coming up ahead of us. Yeah. So I think that uh, our our audience has grown. Uh, a lot in the last two years or so, I would say, and uh, as a result, um, I mean, I think a lot more pe- a lot more people are paying attention to what we do, and I've never had so many people like care about <laughs> or pay attention to or let me know that they're watching or whatever. Kind of what I was doing in a meet, I was getting uh, you know positive messages and, and getting tagged, and people recording the the live feed, and we had multiple threads on our on our barbell medicine Facebook group where people were paying attention discussing what was going on at the meet. And I had that in my head going into several of my attempts. Uh, I was like, you know, there's a lot of people watching this right now who, you know, who care how you do. So uh, particularly had that in my head on my third deadlift. So uh, it helped. So that was pretty cool. It was weird. I only got negative messages. <laughs> so, strange, strange times. All right, so that's a wrap from USAPL Raw Nationals in Spokane, Washington. Again, Austin ended up 16th overall. Uh, Lorraine ended up 10th overall, and Leah ended up second. We had uh, other lifters, including uh, Tom Capitelli's client, um, Moon, who actually won her uh, division, and uh, a bunch of other barbell medicine folks who competed and uh, we'll hope to get them on the vlog next time if we can coordinate times and everything so uh, I want to thank everybody for watching thanks for subscribing thanks for all your support if uh, you're not subscribed yet and you want to stay up to date with all the latest information hit that subscribe button hit like if you dug the video if you guys want those free peaking templates make sure to click the link below let us know what you think of those and we'll catch you guys next time thanks a lot see you